much loot. Clippers right there get the victory of their fourth consecutive game with at least 18 threes made. They knocked down 19 threes tonight, shooting 40. 8% from three, still number one like KRS1 in the NBA in three-point percentage. Smitty, I know you were impressed with this victory from the Clippers. Yeah, you got to knock down shots, but what I like is there's not a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. The ball is hopping. You can see with Coach Lou, he's having them share the basketball, and they're enjoying drawing two. They're getting a lot of hockey assists as well, so I like how they're playing. Like how they're playing. I know, B. Wood, you were paying attention to the offensive efficiency, but also the bench and what they were able to get from Marcus Morris especially. Listen, the bench was on fire. You look at what you got from Luke Kennard, Marcus Morris. Both those guys played very, very well. And then you look at the fact that they were, the ball was moving around. They were hitting threes. The offensive efficiency. The Clippers shot 55% from the floor, 49% from three. You're not going to lose a lot of games when your bench balls out and you're that efficient. Marcus Morris, that is his first 20-point game as a Clipper. They were very efficient. 60 65 points off the bench. You see the box score right there. We have the highlights coming for you. Paul George put on a show. You don't want to miss what he did early in the game. Trust me, we got it coming for you. <laughs> NBA fans, what's good? You are now rocking with the best. It's Roe Parrish in Studio V. It is game time presented by Kia. Here to engage, enlighten, and entertain with the two champions, Brendan Haywood, Steve Smith, and you know what? Smitty, you can shoot that three. Better than the Clippers could shoot that three back in your day. Yeah, I don't know about that, but I can shoot it for another. They were shooting Ooh. basketball. I did lead the league one year in hey, three-point percentage. That's all you need. 47 percent, B. Wood. Take that. Hey, hey, the theme of the show is the threes. We're going to get into that. But right now, the best records in the NBA. You see the Clippers. You see the Pacers. Two of the top five teams in the association went head-to-head -head on the left coast. And early on, listen, PG, he's been listening to that Roy Jones Jr. Y'all must have forgot. Oh, they're going to remember after that. Oh, we. G13. Going hard against his former team. Steve Ballmer is there for it. But these Pacers, Smitty, they're offensively efficient. Doug in the buckets. Yeah, they kept playing extremely hard in that first quarter. As you can see, Doug doing a nice job. 18 points, and I think in that first half, just moving without the basketball, knocking down threes. Four for five for three. That's what he was in the first half. And then Morris making it be known. Paul George still doing work, B. Wood. Listen, Paul George definitely is having a resurgence. A lot of people were down on him after the bubble. He's balling out right now. And speaking of other guys balling out, look at this play by some bonus. That's just filthy. 19 and 14 in the game. We've seen what he's been, been able to do all season, but we see what Kawhi does on a nightly basis. Man. Ooh, fear the claw. Don't go through your legs, change your direction, make it that quick. Make it look easy, Kawhi. Clippers shot 49% from three. They were knocking him down. DJ Khaled says another one. Man, come on. And Kawhi in the right place at the right time. I'm that type of guy. Kawhi. 17 and 7, five assists as the Clippers, the fourth consecutive game, they've knocked down at least 18 threes, continuing to lead the league in three point percentage. Speaking of threes, Bernard, right there, you see him, he had 20. He spoke after the game specifically about their ability to shoot. First in the NBA in three point percentage, fifth in three pointers made. That's become their calling card, Smitty. Yeah, I like, as you can see, Bodies are moving, ball moving. Zubak doing a nice job, understands. I catch it, I'm throwing to the corners. Double team right here, get the ball out of your hand. And you can see with Luke Kennard out there, with also Kawhi Leonard, Malcolm Brown, that couldn't leave Kawhi, left Luke Kennard wide open, and he is shooting it. T. Lou said, be aggressive. Now you have Paul George, as you can see, the cut right now, just the movement. Gets it kicked out to Patrick Beverly. He gets in the act, he knocks down the three. But what I like is these are hockey assists. These are the ball moving. Luke Kennard understands. Throwing it out to Marcus Morris Sr. Now, this was a tough one because he had it rolling. He knocked that one down. But I love the way they are getting out. And, yes, they are understanding great floor spacing. Patrick Patterson knocking it down. They played a little small ball tonight without Serge Ibaka. But it paid off for the Clippers tonight. 27 assists tonight for the Clippers as they continue to make things happen offensively. Speaking of offensively with the Clippers, we know that they've been effective and efficient when it comes to shooting the three. But B. Wood, this bench is something special as well. The bench is something special as well. They got the best performance that uh, they've seen all year out of Marcus Morris. Uh, 20 points. Luke Kennard had 20. Patrick Patterson had uh, 10 points. That's his 50 points just between those three guys right there. 
anytime you get that type of production from your bench, you know it's going to be a special night. And then when you look at the fact that all of those guys shoot the three, well, it goes back to what Smitty was talking about with the fact that this uh, – this team out there, this team, the Clippers team in L.A., is really, really hitting threes at a high rate. Whatever you think is important is what you will spend your money on. And that is in life and in sports. And in the Clippers this offseason, they've shown us they think the three ball and that three-point line is very important because they spend a lot of money with Mr. Kennard and a lot of money with Morris. And you know what? They're in the season they're trying to get to where the money resides, where the money resides. On the way to the Sacramento. And that song, Mary Had a Little Late. <laughs> <laughs> on the way to Sacramento late night. Oh, bully. Whoa. Did he knock oh, it to the back stop? Watch this one, B. Wood. Oh, oh, stop it. I mean, I mean wow, Zion. Oh, man. Mm. Bouncing around. Zion, somebody must have pit. Somebody must have pissed Whoa, Zion wait a minute, wait a minute. Woo. This, this, this looks like the Zion we all came to know and love. This is why he is box office, why you watch it. But De'Aaron Fox had himself a game. He says, I can dunk too. Yes, he can. Man. Oh, my. Man, he was, I mean, he was flying for real for real. That, that's one of them old school, like, dunk contest dunks. No doubt. Don't forget about him. He's an all-star. He's a max player. Brandon Ingram, 22. Any sort of triple-double in a team debut all time. Let's hear from the beard. Hey, James, congrats again on the win. Uh, your teammates out there learning, getting to know you. What did you, though, learn about your teammates tonight? Uh, we have some special talent in this locker room. Uh, very versatile um, shooters, playmakers, um, defenders, a little bit of everything. And that's what you're going to need, especially when it comes postseason. Uh, obviously, we haven't built you know as much chemistry as we, as we would like. But uh, that first game, it felt good to be out there on the court and, and just, you know, give me guys confidence, give me guys energy. And that's what it's going to take throughout the course of the year. Uh, and once you build that up and guys believe in each other, then uh, it's pretty scary. Malika Andrews with ESPN. Hey, James, I'm, I'm wondering if there was any sense of this was like riding a bike, getting back out with the Kevin Durant. I'm a hooper. So I just... Uh, uh, like I said, I'm very unselfish. I'm, I'm I'm willing to just do whatever it takes to win. And obviously, KD is just a you know elite, like just different type of, of basketball player as far as um, the way he's able to score the basketball. Um, it's so easy for him, and I know that. So uh, I just want to make it a little bit more easier if I can. Um, and then you know, for the rest of the teammates, our shooters and our bigs, make it easier for them. Um, so yeah, it was pretty easy out there. Greg Logan with Newsday. James, uh, yesterday you said when you were asked what talent do you need to improve or emphasize or whatever, you said playmaking. And it seemed like that's what you were concentrating on tonight. You got everybody shots, you distributed the ball, you moved it quickly, and then when you had to, you turned it on offensively. So. Can you say is, is that do you expect that to be your approach going forward, especially when they add Kyrie Irving to the mix? Uh, for me, I'm just, you know, I have so many dimensions to my game. Um, I just take whatever the defense gives me. I play the game the right way, or at least I try to uh, every possession. Um, and just takes whatever, you know, the d defense is giving me. And like I say, whoever has the hot hand, um, that's who, who deserves the ball. You know, the, the, the basketball finds energy. It finds people that have good energy, good spirit. So uh, that's what I try to bring to the game tonight. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Hey, James. It's uh, hard to get in somebody else's head, but, I mean, you made it pretty clear that you wanted to be in Brooklyn, and at least it seemed like you were really enjoying yourself out there tonight. I, I'm just curious, now that the game's over, I mean, did it feel like what you expected, and how did it feel? How would you describe it? It felt unbelievable. Uh, I mean, I hope you can tell by my smile and, and my play. Um, just excited, excited, and uh, for the opportunity. This is an unbelievable organization from top to bottom, and uh, you know, for me, all I have to do is just go out there and, and, and be the best, you know, James Harden I can be, and um, you know, good things will happen. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey James, you know, one thing about you and, and Kyrie and KD uh, as it pertains to you guys' offenses, offensive talent is that you guys can kind of tell what the defense is going to do before they do it. Uh, how do you think that is going to help guys like Joe, uh, guys like DeAndre, when 
the defense can't really help off of, you know, we saw today, defense can't help off of Joe. He's going to hit a three. Defense can't hit off, help off of the guy down low. you got to throw the lob up, up top. Uh, how, how does that make this team better that you guys all know what the defense is going to do and they can't really double you? Once we go through every scenario, and it's only maybe four or five that teams can really do against us, and throughout the course of the year, that's going to happen. Once we figure out, okay, they're doing this tonight, this is how we attack it, or they're doing this tonight, this is how we attack it. Once we get that, um, it's, it's, it's basically up to us. And I, I'm so excited for Kai to get back. You know, he's, he's a you know, key piece to what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, the chemistry, as soon as we can build that, um, as soon as we can be on the court together, um, there's going to be scary hours. Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. Hey, James. Jill and Kevin were kind of saying how, you know, early on everyone was maybe a little too pass-happy and, and uh, not <laughs> just what point in the game did, did you kind of start to feel you got into a rhythm and got comfortable? I mean, I had, what, nine turnovers throughout the game and maybe six or seven of them were to, you know, looking to get guys and DeAndre get, get them lives. That's me being unselfish. Uh, you know, that's me trying to get guys involved. But at the end of the day, I just still got to be a, 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 a player at the end of the day and score when I need to score and when the, when the pass is there to do it. So um, first game, I'm happy to get it out the way. Now we can watch some film uh, and get ready for our next opponent. Brian Mahoney with the Associated Press. Hey, James, uh, how did your preparation today? Did you know for sure you'd get to play, or if not, when did you find out? And, um, you know, without not knowing many of the kind of plays and things like that, is it almost more fun that you get to figure it out yourself a little bit more as opposed to kind of having things scripted? I mean, you know, I have, you know, had multiple conversations with our coaching staff on, on what we're trying to accomplish on both ends of the ball. So uh, pretty much I'm familiar with it, and I know, you know, um, you know, where, where, where spots where to put our, our, our players in. And then it makes it easy when you have Kevin Durant on your team who can take some of the pressure off of you as well. So, um, like I said, it's a long way to go. It's a process. But I think just watching film, getting better, learning where guys like to be. Um, we have some unbelievable shooters trying to get them more shots so they can feel more involved in the offense, um, getting our bigs more, um, you know, uh, pain points and just kind of directing people and guiding people to where you know they, sh they should be so they can be more effective. I think once that happens, our team will be a lot better. Ian Begley with SNY. James, it's not a basketball question, but could you share anything about what you had to give Landry uh, Shamit for number 13? I'm sure he'll post it when I give it to him. <laughs> Nah, that's 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 big time though. For him to sacrifice that, uh, you know, I got to make sure you know I get him some. And last question, Jen Williams with Fox Five New York. Hey James, um, you came to Bro uh, you said you came to Brooklyn to play for a contender. I know it's just the game, first game, but keeping that in mind, how are you feeling about that decision after the first game? Uh, it felt great. I mean, even from when I stepped foot into uh, the building, you know, it was open arms and. Uh, like I said, it's anything I need, they're, they're there for me. Um, they're making sure I'm, I'm getting my work in, making sure that, you know, everything is, is, is laid. So all I got to do is go out there and just be me. Um, for me, in return, I got to make sure everybody is, you know, is feeding off that. And tonight was a really good start. Uh, hopefully the next game we have Kai back and just keep this, keep this thing rolling. James Harden, Kevin Durant combined 74 points this evening. Most ever in a game as teammates played three years together in OKC, had not played together since.